I think I think you have to approve that or something. Okay. All right. So I got to put this legal thing on here. So we're gonna, you and I are going to have a what I call a good start session on an issue that will unfold as we go through this session. Um, and we're going to record it. And I will be calling you Roop during this. That is okay with you to do. You may, at the end of it, choose to have privacy, which would could include any of the following, completely blanking out your video, although people would know your name, Roop. They would, wouldn't see the video. And uh, adjusting the... Uh, the pitch of your voice so that it becomes difficult to recognize and so on. That's your choice now. And it will be your choice at the end, but I want to comment here first. I think you come across really gently, really nice, really sincerely. If you show yourself without any kind of privacy, I'm urging you to think in that direction. And I'm not hearing anything we've talked about so far that would get in the way of that. Am I, am I incorrect? It's just how I feel about it, but, but you're right. Yeah. Well, okay. Make that decision later. Okay. All right. Now, so, but it's okay with you if we record on that basis. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Now, the other thing is you recognize that I'm not a licensed therapist. I'm not a licensed anything right um and so so you know you're not going to hold me liable you're going to take care of yourself and all of this stuff i'm just trying to do my best we are friends trying to help each other and and there is no liability you're not going to send your lawyers after me or <laughs> anything else correct correct all right okay so that little piece will get edited out my lawyer's will scream at me if I don't do it. <laughs> so, so to maintain my own peace, we do that one. Okay. All right. So then we'll just, we'll begin with this. Okay. So, well, okay, Rup, we've had a um, interesting discussion for maybe the better part of an hour on the issue we're going to address. And um, it was about an hour, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And that issue um, had to do with the kind of reverse of what I'm used to. People are used to saying, oh, I, I'm in this world of separation. How do I get out of it? Or how do I, you know, this kind of thing. You're saying from age up to seven, is this correct? Up to yeah. seven? What did you call you? You were in a spiritual awareness area of your life. And you called it the golden what? The golden current. Talk about that for a minute. What was that like the first seven years of your life? Wait, 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 wait. let me say something first. What were the main issue is you've you've had this magnificent spiritual experience. And then a shift occurred, and now you're in this world of seeming separation, this dream, this illusion that we talk about so much in our optimal EFT course with the unseen therapist and so on. And you're wanting to get back there. You wanted to get back to the golden current. I'm saying it right? Yeah, All right. more or less, yeah. All right, now talk about the golden current. Okay, so the golden current for me was is something I could actually perceive and feel and it uh, it's a it's a state of bliss, and I would radiate that bliss. I would feel it in every fiber of my being. Up until age seven. Yeah, about age eight. Yeah, for the first seven years, it okay. was it was very strong. And uh, um, it was like the sun shining all the time. And I would wake up and and just look forward to the day, but not just, I mean, that sounds so bland when I put it, but, it's, but it was with great uh, joy and anticipation about what this day could bring. And everything was had its beauty. Um, it was, it was, for me, it was, it was heaven on earth. 
Well, you're describing a seven-year version of what I experienced, which I call, not the golden current, I call oneness, okay? Um, but you're describing that oneness that we're even teaching people to try to get to. And I'm trying to get back there myself because I was there briefly in 1988. If you read my book, you would, that experience would have been there. Anybody listening in, you know, read. The, by the way, if you're listening in, there are some links at the bottom of this called essential links. <laughs> and they will, among them is a link to the book, a link to advanced trading and so on. It's a free ebook. So, but anyway, we want to get back to that. Um, that exquisite experience. Now, let me compare something with you for a moment. That exquisite experience that I experienced, it doesn't necessarily have to be yours. I just want to compare for a moment. Mm -hmm. That to me was our true reality. While this world of separation, where everybody seems to be separate from everything else and not this oneness, grandeur, bliss, okay. Um, was the real reality, even though this experience here seems so convincingly real, the real reality, to me at least, was that oneness thing that I had experienced for a few minutes. Is that parallel with your golden current? Or was there, yes. would, would you say some differences? No, I... Uh... It is a oneness. It is emerging. I think. I think the uh, um, the bit I'm, you know, the part I'm trying to get back to was this. Uh, how do I say a, a kind of a, a a twin awareness? So experiencing it in the human body constantly. Yeah. Okay. Now. We have people listening in have different religious and spiritual backgrounds and beliefs, et cetera. But I want to I pick up on what you said just now and bring up not necessarily Jesus, because some people believe in Jesus, some people don't believe in Jesus, et cetera. I want to talk about <clears throat> the idea of Jesus. That is someone so spiritually evolved within a human body that they could do all these magical things, raise the dead and cure the sick and mm. walk on water and all the other things, which were a walk in the park. If you are truly spiritually oriented into this golden current, into this oneness, if you are plugged, in, even within a human body, you are still plugged into that ultimate source. You can do all these things. Now, I think that plugs into your desire. You want to have that golden current, as you call it, while running around inside a body. Yep. Did I say it right? Yep. You don't want much, do you? <laughs> but I've already experienced it. <laughs> All right. And you experienced it for seven years. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe a bit too young to truly understand what you could do with all of that. Cause that's very early on, but maybe not. Okay. So that's the goal. That, and, and, and as you would describe this to me, Roop, somehow or other after age seven, you that, that oneness, that golden current faded and you got more and more into now, what do I do with, to get around this illusion, this dream? And you're nodding your head. I guess that means yes. Yeah. Okay. And in there, you use the word prior to our recording here, feeling powerless within it. Yeah. And so you and I, talked about where that powerless feeling would come from. And I see a couple of things and you see a couple of things, but we want to talk about that because it's where that comes from that we want to aim at. We want to do something about, we want to get a good start on unraveling that powerless feeling 
so you can get back into power. Am I saying the goal correctly? Yep. Yep. All right. All right. So the power, I'm going to talk for a moment about the powerlessness as I understand it. To, to, to have seven years of this oneness golden current is a nice heavy dose, my opinion. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I had maybe seven minutes, okay? If, if that, all right? <laughs> but you're also very young. All right. Now, you have to run around in this world. This world is one of competition. Everybody seems to think they're running around in their own separate body, looking after their own separate interests. And so you have to compete with all that for, you got to compete for money. You got to compete for position. You got to compete for romance. You got to compete for, you know, all kinds of things in this world. And everybody else is looking out for themselves, compete, 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 compete. And that, uh, for someone who just wants to be peaceful, that could end up being powerless. How am I doing? Very good. Would you add anything to that? So I just want to clarify something, which is, um, no, you're absolutely right. It, it, I do look upon the world in a bemused state. However, uh, you know, my journey, you know, I've been meditating, for example, for 38 years since the age of 12. Uh, and finding my way back, as it were. And I do connect to that inner peace. It just, when I'm meditating. Oh, you do? You get, into, do. The, yeah. you get into the golden current? Yes, I feel, I feel the current. It's tantalizingly close. And, and when I'm less bothered by the world, less bothered by my issues that we talked about. Um, and shaking my head in bemusement about how the world operates. Meaning it's a silly world, but I got to deal with it anyway. Exactly. Um, then the synchronicities that we talked about happen. And and, and so I know I'm in the flow. However, part of me, which is this human part of me, the human consciousness, is not connected in the same way as it used to be. That's good or bad? Bad. All right. T tell me how that's bad. Because I'm not feeling the joy, the bliss the potential of each day, just enjoying the little things. I, I, I feel paralyzed. I feel very stiff, powerless, even, even to, even to um, uh, say what I want. Do you want a piece of fruit? Yeah, I would love a, doesn't come out of my lip mouth. Do you, wait, I, I, I didn't quite get that. You want a piece of fruit? Was that what? So if you offer me a piece of fruit, uh -huh. what fruit would you like? Uh -huh. I, I, wouldn't, I couldn't come up with an answer because I've been conditioned just to accept whatever's given to me. Okay. All right. Not state a preference. All right. So here's what I'm thinking and this we talked about before the recording but i'm going to say it probably a little differently so i need to have you verify if i'm in the right right place or not mm -hmm. okay so we've been we've been in the golden current the oneness and then starts to fade here comes the illusionary world you got to get around in it the dream you got to compete you got to stand up for yourself you've got to make yourself known you got to all that stuff okay and even something simple like asking a piece of for a piece of fruit and what kind would you like, you have a difficulty asserting yourself, letting yourself be known, putting your own stuff out there. There's a powerless feeling. 
Now that, I see you nodding your head, that, that comes, that comes from, to use your term, conditioning from this world. At least that's how I see it. Yeah. And you and I were talking before the recording about influences by, for example, your father. Now, here you are, very yeah. young. And he would not let you do anything. You had to, to the point where you always felt like if you were going to do anything, you had to check with somebody else to see if it's okay. Did I say it right? Yeah. yeah. Talk about that a little bit. How does that, I mean, I don't have that myself. Okay. So I, I, I need to have a, a sense from you of what that's like. Can you give me an example or something like that? Um, so an example uh, from my life. Um, so first of all, let me, let me say what it feels like. Sure. This, this, this feeling of, of not being powerful. Um, so it, it's it, what it what it's what it's felt like is coming out of this beautiful current and into a hurricane or a tornado. There's a darkness and it's swirling around and it's yes. very confusing, mm -hmm. very disorienting. Um, the example I want to give uh, that comes to mind was when I first got my personal computer, one of those big, chunky things. Uh, many, many, many years. a couple of decades ago, probably. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah more right. than that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. And, and, um, and the box stayed unopened for a week. Now, the box, so, it had to it had come from the cold, so it had to stay, you know, you want to avoid condensation, right? So it had to acclimatize. But then he wouldn't let me open and I kept asking him. I don't know why I kept asking him, but it was just normal to do that. You well, asked for permission. Let me stop you there for a second. I'm hearing you were conditioned not to ask him. It's a simple thing. Can I open the box? But you're conditioned not to ask you. You've got to check with authorities and all of this, and authorities know the answer, yeah. and, and, and you don't. Am I saying yes. it right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You don't, you don't, you don't have, uh, am I saying it right? You don't even have the right to ask to open the box. Did I hear it right? Um, that's right, yes. I couldn't just open the box without asking. Well, you have to ask. Okay, so when you ask and your, your father says, no, we got to have somebody else open the box for you. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, yeah, and assemble it. All right. Now, let me, let me just stop right there. Just, yeah. We'll go on with this. But that is, a, to me, in my experience, a very heavy conditioning that says you are powerless unless you ask me first. I have to make the decisions for you. Am I saying it right? Yes. Yes. That's heavy conditioning. That's heavy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, when you put it like that, yeah. Well, well, <laughs> let me put it, let me also mention this. Most kids, at least in my experience, and your culture may have been from a different country than mine. Okay. <laughs> and this, this one here in America. But they're forever into things, opening stuff and doing stuff they shouldn't do. <laughs> they're forever exploring, pushing the boundaries and seeing how much trouble they get. I mean, we, we do a lot of that. And you had that, if I'm hearing it right, conditioned right out of you. Yes? Yeah. Well, all right. That's, that's called a limit. <laughs> yeah, it, it happened from an earlier age. You know, that when, I, when, I, when, I, when we talked about being tested, yeah, that's another. Yeah, but let's go on with this. Uh, the okay. box, unless you finish with the piece, the personal computer box, we can go on to anything you want. But testing, sure. Okay. Whatever. All right. All right. So, okay, I'll let me finish with the box. So the uh, I couldn't open the box, and I couldn't assemble the computer. You couldn't because somebody, you didn't know how, or you weren't allowed to. 
I wasn't allowed to. Okay. But I didn't know how either because it was the first time I had one of these things. But I knew I could figure it out. But you, you dare know, not. read the manual, but, but I but dare you, not. But you dare not. Okay. Well, let, let me stop you there a second. You dare not. Mm -hmm. you know, thou shalt not open this box. Thou shalt not do anything unless Father says. Or else is what I'm hearing it. You didn't say it, but there's an or else. There's a penalty. What's the penalty if you open the box or do something without his authority? Uh, it'd be very angry. Now, I'm hearing something a little. Yes, got that. I'm hearing something a little differently than that, but correct me. Correct me. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm hearing, yes, he will be angry. Right. I'm also hearing... I won't get his love. I need his love. And if I make him angry, love is gone. Fits? Not fit? Uh, kind of. Kind of. Because uh, because it would upset my mom. If he was angry, then life would be unpleasant for everybody. All right. I'm still hearing, I'm still hearing, I'm hearing the penalty. I'm hearing lack of love in it or losing love. I'm hearing that in there someplace, even though you're not using it. And I can be wrong. Uh, that's something that I, I see so often. But let's use a different word than losing love. You would be disapproved of. Mm -hmm. You would be. You would feel rejected. On point? It's, it's more about the um, consequences resulting from the disapproval. Okay. All right. Okay. That, 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 that go beyond me. All right. All right. Continue. I keep interrupting because I just want to get more and more and more <laughs> on sure. the table. See, what we're doing, what we're doing here, we're going to eventually bring an unseen therapist eventually. But we want to. What we're doing now, Roop, is we're, we're um, putting as much on the table as we can. We are reframing things. We are putting, we are exploring things because we want as much on the table as we can when we finally get to unseen therapists. Because we don't want, we, we want to minimize anything that may be hidden, forgotten. Mm -hmm. We don't want to look at, we've repressed people. We do that. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's, what, that's why we're exploring all that. We want to do as much as we can to put as much on the table when it comes time for unseen therapists. So anyway, continue on, please. Okay, so in this particular case, one week had passed, and I asked again, when can I open this? Because I was super excited. And... And my, uh, my father said he would ask a neighbor who was a mechanic by profession, didn't know anything about computers. Like a, like a car mechanic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, uh, and, I had, and I can remember this sinking feeling. What is, why is this guy held so high? And I am... And I know nothing. I'm treated like that. Yeah. And I remember feeling very angry. And so guess what I did, Gary? I opened the box. Uh -oh. and I assembled the computer. Uh oh. And when he and when he came home from work, I just gazed at him in a defiant way. And sh and and said, "Look," and showed it and showed it working. And he was very surprised. It wasn't the eruption that I was expecting. But he, but he raised his eyebrows in, in a classic expression of surprise that he, that he did. So with that experience, were you then saying, oh, maybe I'm not powerless after all? Or did that show up? I knew I wasn't. I knew I could do it. I knew I could figure it all out. However, um, 
there was this always this battle to get there. You and always been, you, you always have to yeah, go to the authority. Yeah, or battle through the authorities or listen to what the authority says. And the authority can be different people. There have been different circumstances in my life. You know, it's just not my father, is just my father, but there's been others. Well, yeah, but I'm guessing the foundation comes from your father because you start reach, you use the term radiating early on in this conversation. And so you start radiating this powerless or this conflict going on. You, you know, and people will pick up what we radiate. You know, our gestures, our tones of voice, they, they pick this sort of thing up. And so this is what I'm hearing. This is my experience. Mm -hmm. Other people who show up become replicas of your father. They're, they're picking up your powerlessness. They become authorities. And so your powerlessness has to continue asking authorities for what to do. And if you don't, you feel guilty, angry, or <laughs> if you don't comply, you feel guilty, angry, powerless, et cetera. I, I, don't, let, don't let me impose words on you. No, that's, that's certainly true. Um, I want to talk about a, an earlier memory. Okay. Because there's more than one ingredient, I think, to this mix sure. of, of feeling powerless. So taking a holiday to India when we were kids, um, we were very well behaved. You know, we wouldn't run around the house, opening drawers, picking up things. We were in, you know, we didn't touch other people's belongings. In one incident, I was sitting with my sisters in a room and there was some money left on a table. And we became concerned uh, in case that money got lost somehow. And it should be returned to the owner of the house. That's what we, we discussed it amongst ourselves, and that's what we ended up doing. However, when we went to see our mum, who was sitting with the owner, the owner started almost celebrating. It was a very odd reaction. She's kind of laughing and celebrating. You, 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 were, you were giving the owner this money. Yeah, we, we, well, we handed it over to our mum okay. to give, to the, to, give to, the, to the right person. Yeah. And it turned out to be a test. So the a money had been left deliberately on the table. A test, and okay. The, and the bet was, with my mum, the bet was from the owner that we would touch the money. Because she had, my mum had said to her, we were so well behaved, we wouldn't touch anything. Oh, okay. So we failed the test. Why did we touch the money, my mum asked. She was uh, a little upset about it all. And so it dawned on me, uh, in my memory, or in my recollection, it dawned on me that there were far-reaching consequences of even the smallest act. Of even smaller tests. The, sm yeah. the smallest acts going on. Yeah. I couldn't know the veracity of anything. I couldn't look at uh, something on the surface and just, just say, this is what it is. There might be some deeper hidden significance or meaning. Which had, which had consequences that would either upset my mom or upset my dad or whatever else, we would be in trouble, whatever it was. And you were powerless. And that yeah, it's a paralyzing feeling, especially when you're still in single figures. You mean age-wise? Age-wise, yeah. Yeah. All right. 
So you're, you've got to ask authorities and you're constantly, I mean, this is one story you give about being tested. We talked earlier, but you're constantly being tested, 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 tested. You must behave, my terms or else, okay, but you must behave. Uh, you must do things just right, which means you can't do things on your own. You got to ask, you got to ask, you got to ask. You have been conditioned to be powerless. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And you've got to anticipate. Say, well, say more. So, so for example, instead of just doing something, you have to think out what the future consequences could be. As if you know at age eight, 10 or six or whatever. Yeah, and then, and then mitigate them and take corrective actions, yeah. Whatever that is at age six, eight, 10 or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. I mean, the adult in you, I'm presuming, sees the folly in that. Yep. Okay. However... And this is what we want to aim at the young child in you, the conditioning in you, the emotional response, which is the important term here is different than the logical response. I mean, that's silly as we look back at it as an adult. Yes. Am I right? The, yeah, you're right. But the, uh, the response, which is at a, on, uh, at a physical layer is extremely powerful. Yeah, I know as we were even talking about this kind of thing before we recorded, you were telling me you were feeling some kind of anxiety or yeah, what around here. Yeah, in here. Yeah, just some agitation, yeah. Are exactly. you feeling it now? It's present. I'm aware of it. It's, it's, it's much lower, but yeah. Okay. All right, so let me... But by the way, this thing about it being silly and all that, as an adult looking back at it is a form of reframe, you know, and we've been talking about this, putting more on the table and we can see you were conditioned. I've said that several times, this is mm -hmm. sort of um, sowing seeds, if you will, sowing reframe seeds for your system. So when we finally get to unseen therapists, we've massaged this hopefully well enough so that we can start doing something, something with it. But it, but in summary, so far, we have the golden current, seven years of your life. Then we have a shift and, we, and the conditioning of the world, the, the illusionary dream world around us starts to kick in. Your father being a central player. Mm -hmm. You've got to ask the authority. You don't have any power of your own, hence power powerless okay you're being tested constantly you've got to anticipate and have the right answers <laughs> yep. I, i'm i'm sitting here sitting here laughing because you know in a sense <laughs> I, I don't know why i'm thinking of this but there was a situation a sitcom in this country decades ago called all in the family uh, do you ever, ever remember seeing that? No. Well, the, the, lead, the lead guy in there was named Archie, but he was a bigot. He was a bigot. And he was always, you know, uh, downgrading people who weren't his. He was white. His, his white race, you know, the black people, the Mexican people, the, they're dumb. And <laughs> I mean, he did, it, he did it in such a way that it became hilarious and the hilariousness actually made the point about how stupid racial beliefs and comments really are. <laughs> it was very well, even though it was insulting in one sense, it was done in a way where you can, it was just say, how, how dumb, how dumb. <laughs> okay. And in one sense, I'm trying to do this with you. We're trying to look at some of the things that you had to experience in your conditioning and go, really you know that's what we're trying to do i'm hoping we're starting to make some headway what's your thoughts on that yes we are um you know i'm sitting here watching myself and listening to you as well and um 
And I think the issue is, uh, and, and I've been feeling this more strongly the last few days, is I've been unable to see it. I've experienced it. I've lived through the conditioning. I've acted upon it, poured myself into it, given my best to it, and but yet not seen it. You've been complying with it, but it's just been sort of automatic. Yep. Okay. And our reframing now, the purpose of it has been to have you stand, stand back and look and go, really? I mean, that's yeah. the hope. That's the hope. Yeah. Okay. So that seems to be, I don't know that we're going to collapse all that in one session, but that you're seeing things you haven't seen before uh, in that sense? Yep. Yeah, starting to, yeah. Okay. Don't ever let me put words in your mouth, okay? Because I think the cracks are emerging. I mean, the, the cracks are developing, right? Yeah. Okay. Where, they, where they weren't, and it's quite what's behind them. All right. Now, I'm going to do a little more reframing before we bring in unseen therapists. Okay. Your father, as far as you can tell, why would he behave in such an authoritarian way? What motivates that? I've been thinking about that too, because I cared for him in, the, in, uh, in his last part of his life for six years. Five of those years was full time. Um, and he would talk, he would talk about his life. And one of those things uh, was that he was powerless. He felt powerless. He came from India to the UK, and his vision of, of being in the UK and his vision of being accepted by its people was, was just that. It was an illusion. And he struggled. He uh, struggled for many years trying to get promoted, working very hard, believing in hard work, believing in meritocracy. And he told me, and this, and this, this was very painful for him, uh, but now I look back, I can see why, how it contributed to his behavior because he wasn't very good at talking about his emotions. He didn't know how to deal with them. And he didn't want to be seen as a failure to his family back in India either. So his work... I'm going to stop you there one second, yeah. one second if I can. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to be seen as a failure. I'm hearing, I'm hearing, but correct me, okay? I'm hearing. Yeah. If he is a failure, that is yet more evidence that he is powerless. Yes, but I think, but um, but this particular example that, that he that he talked about. So he would work hard. He would um, the outputs of his work. Not um, not just one manager, but uh, maybe a couple of them, successive ones would uh, erase his name from the work and put their name instead. They got promoted. Yes, okay. So he was working for their promotion. Yes. And, and he was the only person of color in this particular department. And he didn't know how to react to that. He wasn't seen, he wasn't uh, uh, supported, and he was clearly good enough. He clearly worked hard, but he was stopped from succeeding. All right. Now, I am seeing, to me it's kind of obvious actually, but I can always be wrong here. But here is a man who feels powerless on his own, um, 
working, if you will, in your example, for other people's promotions, being put down, but needing, needing to feel okay about himself, to feel powerful, to feel mm -hmm. successful in some fashion. Okay. Mm -hmm. And one way to do that is to have power over other people. Yeah. Now, we're not blaming him. We're understanding the behavior. That's the purpose. We're not excusing yeah. the behavior. We're not blaming the behavior. We're understanding the behavior. All right. We're not even supporting or condoning the behavior. We're understanding the behavior. So here, here is someone that I'm seeing that has all this powerlessness feeling, wanting to be success somehow. And one way to do that is have, I can see a couple of ways. One is to have power over other people and who better to have power over than someone who really can't, can't, uh, uh, can't react back. And that's your children, all right? Mm -hmm. Not to excuse it and not to blame. It's, I can see the motivation. I can see why that would be important. I can see how he would even call that to be loving because he wants you to turn out right by his means. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's a man who needs to be powerful himself, who is feeling powerless. The other, and so he has power over his children and you included testing the children and Got to do it my way and don't open the don't open the box until I say and all this stuff. Okay? Mm -hmm. Giving you the feeling of powerlessness. And I can also see you haven't said this, but let me float this possibility. That one way he can be perceived as powerful in his social circles or successful in his circles as if his children behave well they are his badges mm -hmm. and that being very important and if you didn't if you misbehave somehow here comes big time anger consequences mm -hmm. and my own point hey I, I'm, I'm sitting here yeah i, I, I want to make I mean, sure i'm not imposing stuff there is a status thing yeah absolutely yeah okay you know, from, from exam grades, anything, you know, anything like that. Yeah. Okay. So we're not going to excuse the behavior. Okay. But I want to say one thing as well. Please, please. One of the, one of the things is I, I think his idea of how to navi navigate the system. How to navigate uh, what? The system or the life. System. The system. Okay. Yeah, that he found himself into in he was the way he managed to do it he then i guess whether consciously or unconsciously tried to impose onto us as well because his way of doing things was uh was get permission yeah okay and that's how the world works to him yeah all right so what else could he give to his kids other than how the world works? Is he going to give them something other than he doesn't believe in or doesn't experience? I mean, how can you do that? Well, you're nodding your sure. head. Yeah. yeah, 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 sure. All right. Well, with that in mind, I think, I, I, I think it's time to bring in unseen therapists and put some of this together with her help. Does that seem to work for you? Yep. All right. Now, you and I have done unseen therapists before, and you're used to our course and one thing and another. Okay, Roop. Um, so I'm going to narrate this, okay, but I want to do it in a, in a way that um, it's going to be easy for you. But I also want to do it in a way that is jointly, jointly done, where we work together love is best when shared okay so this is going to be a three-way experience at least that's how i'm seeing it you me and the unseen therapist 
What that means is I'm going to sort of be the head narrator, if you will, in all of this, Mm -hmm. sort of guiding it. But anytime we're doing this and something comes up for you where maybe something I say doesn't seem on point or you have a new perspective or another thought comes up that you think would be useful, stop, bring it up. Okay. And we'll integrate it or not integrate it, whatever. We'll, but that's how we do it jointly. Now, you don't have to do that. Maybe this is all going to fall. So we need no need to do that. You're not required to do it. You're encouraged to do it if it shows up. Okay. All right. Can so, I ask you before we start? Well, wait, no, 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 no. Before, before you ask me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> There's one requirement here. Right. And that's that you do it right or don't do it at all. <laughs> a, 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 a little reframe before we begin, okay? <laughs> anyway, yes. anyway, go ahead. You were going to say something. Yeah, I was going to say something because you you should be the unseen therapist type experiences. There's there's things move quite quickly from one to another. Uh huh. So it's knowing when to stop exactly because it's sort of you know happen it can happen quite quickly with with many things. I'm, I'm missing each other. I'm missing this. This is your experience with unseen therapists. They happen quickly and got to know. Yeah. So, so no, you said if, if a thought arises or if some experience arises, then stop and, and talk about it. Mention yeah. it. Yeah. Open the box. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Open the box. <laughs> but what happens if there's a series of things, one after another, rapidly? It's, uh, we're doing it together. Okay. All right. We're doing it together. I don't know what's going to happen. I never know. I just start and and I get some stuff starts going on and metaphors occur and we go places and okay. (laughs) I can often start a session. And by the way, we're for those listening in. We're, I mean, there's our there's some sort of standard sessions that we do uh, that are very useful for a lot of things. Uh, But because we're into an advanced sort of thing here, I'm going to get a little more creative. Just to be fun too, okay? So it's a little more advanced than a beginner's use of our course. It's more advanced use of it, but anyway. With that in mind, close the eyes. Take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. And as a way of inviting Unseen Therapy, who, by the way, has been listening here all along, okay? But just, just align yourself as best you can with her pure love, which is my recalling a loving moment, a simple little loving moment in your own life, and just nod your head whenever you're there. All right, good. Okay. One thing I didn't do before this is to get a before zero to 10 on something. But I'm sort of guided because we're not going to be dealing with a specific event necessarily. I'm sort of guided to just, let's just move through this however it un- unfolds without measuring a bunch of stuff. Okay. So let's go back in time. From your ages zero to seven. When you're in this golden current. Everything is taken care of. There's a certain power in it, as we described. I don't know if on the recording or not, but we described, you described this as something that wasn't the power of I'm bigger than somebody else. So I have physical power or financial power. or No, it's the power of just truth. The power yeah. of absolute knowledge, which is much different than the other kinds of power, the Illusionary world seems to think is important. That's actually another part of the illusion. The real power is, ah, there is nothing but the oneness, the golden current, the, as you called it prior to recording, the divine mother. We call it the unseen therapist, but same thing. But here's this golden current as you call it, 
You are in it. And from our discussion, you're the one that's in it, but your father, other members of your family, and so on, are not in it. They're more dealing with the separated world, the illusion, the dream, the place where we've got to compete and have the other kind of power, if you will, which can, which can eventually lead for at least some people, probably most people, versions of powerlessness. In fact, if you think about it, those people that you think, we tend to think in this world, have the most power, as the world sees the word power, at some level feel powerless because they keep wanting more and more and more power. That's one of the things that kind of, they want more money. They have all the money in the world. Now they want more money and they want more power. They want more influence. Eh, one could say that's because there's a powerlessness thing they're trying to avoid. Be that true or not. In that golden current, powerlessness does not exist. Would I be correct? Yeah. All right. But father, for example, is outside of that. Other people in the world are outside of that. Very few people. Some people have gotten to it, my, myself included briefly, okay, but not seven years. Okay. So in one sense, you have power because you have an understanding. You have a experience in this world that very few people have. In that sense, by calling that form of power, that truth, that ultimate knowledge, makes you more powerful than just about anybody else because the rest of the world just is not seeing it. So the powerlessness that you experience really is something that has developed from within a fictional dream world. Are you agreeing with this so far? Because this is a little different than yeah. we talked about. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you actually have more power than just about anybody else you know. Okay. Maybe some exceptions someplace, but basically the real power you have experienced for seven years where other people have experienced it not at all, or maybe for a minute or two or five or something like that with a spiritual experience. But that lasts for seven years. The golden current is still there, but you have somehow shifted away from it because now you are being conditioned by what appears to be the outside world, conditioned primarily by, or often, centrally, by your father. Now, one thing your father has never done, at least in our experience, has been in that golden current. And I want to ask you, Roop, is it possible, in your imagination anyway, and even though he's passed on, to join with him, take him with you into that golden current to see what happens. Does that seem imaginarily possible? Yeah, yes, absolutely. I've had experiences of my father following his passing. Okay. Where he, he exhibits that same joy I felt. All right. All right, so let's... Years, so. Let's do that in your imagination. I know he's not here physically and all of that, but your know, imagination is it's a really nice tool. <laughs> do almost anything you want to do with it. <laughs> so there's you and your father. And even though you've had these nice experiences with him after and around his passing and so on, let's take him back at a time when he's being authoritarian because he thinks he needs to be authoritarian. Okay? That's the way you raise children. He wants to be powerful himself. It's an illusion. It's a mistake. We're not blaming him. 
But it's an error because he passed this on to his son, who is running around feeling powerless when he's very educated. He, he's, you know, he's very well spoken and he <laughs> walks around this very nice looking, very walks around this world, you know, and, but feeling powerless. So you take your father into this golden current, and there you are. There's the unseen therapist. You'll have to wait one moment here while I answer the phone. Just a minute. So let me make a little note. Sorry. Um, so there's your father in the current, a different experience for him. He's, he's been conditioned himself to be powerless, had all his experiences, and now he gets to experience what it's like to have the true, real power. And he can look at this and say, you know, maybe I made a mistake. Maybe the real power isn't what I think it is. <laughs> and the powerlessness isn't what I think or thought it was. Rather, this other power, this power of the truth, this power of knowledge, not the power of the world, this is the true power. Now, let me bring you into this for the moment, Roop. In your imagination, how do you see your father reacting? Is he, is he, is he uh, not liking it? Is he resisting it? Is he going along with it? Is he transforming? What? Tell me what's happening. He's going along with it. He can, he can see the truth of it. Okay. He can understand it. I mean, as, as you were talking, I was showing him another incident um, because this is another aspect. Uh, he would do things quickly. So for any task, it always felt like there was a stopwatch going off and it had to be done really quickly or else. And this particular incident involved a taxi. Invol I'm sorry, involved? A, a taxi. A taxi, okay. And go, yeah, yeah, a taxi ride going somewhere. Uh -huh. uh, and um, I paid the taxi guy. And my dad was saying, hurry up. And he was, he was really doing things. He was agitated. Things had to be done quickly. And, and then he paid the taxi driver himself. And then got angry when he found out I already paid him. The, the taxi driver just sped off, <laughs> having been paid, tw being paid twice. Sounds like a true capitalist, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There was no communication. There was just this rapid action, and he was in charge. And I was showing right. him that, and and he was just watching it. Well, okay. So in the gold in the golden current, yes. Were you were you revisiting that, and is there a different take on it? Yes, it's revisiting it, but I, but it, but speaking to him very calmly. Uh, I wasn't feeling the emotion, but I was replaying it, and um, and and saying saying to Dad, "This is the impact it had on me. It felt like a. It felt like a." an emotional earthquake, you know, the wave rippling through me. So as you are, I'm sorry, go ahead. 
yeah, I don't know how best to describe it, but it's it's like something from the external, like a wave of negativity of, and then I'm absorbing that is coming through me, and 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 I plummet into inside. You plummet. Is that good or bad? Bad. Bad. Okay. I was yeah. hearing. I was hearing in all of that that a transformative type thing like now you're advising your father about hey you know what's i forgot the words you were using but you know lighten up um you were echoing the truth of the matter yes yes exactly yes okay so, so the, very calmly very peacefully yeah, ca calmly was yeah calmly without judgment yeah which would which was a if i'm getting it right a transformative positive shift in your reaction. Yes. Okay, so I'm not getting where the plummeting bad thing is. Is that now gone away or is that to be dealt with? It, it's a memory, but, uh, but so it's, it's what I experienced. But somewhere that plummeting feeling as if, if joy or optimism or my sense of being or self-esteem, you tied a big lead block and it just plummeted. And I think that's being held. It feels like it's being held around my tummy area. Oh, okay. All right. There's, there's an agitation there, but it's, right. it's not so clear to me. Well, okay. So there's, if I'm hearing it right, there's some form of, movement in a good direction in that you were advising him calmly and that's a different perception but now we have this plummeting thing yeah okay so the sort of former is here i can feel it the, the what it you feel is very what do you, what do you feel is, so when i'm advising my father when in in this golden current uh -huh. there's this uh positive feeling radiating here yes okay and then in the depths of my stomach, there's that plummeting sensation too. All right. So we're, we're in the golden current. And the golden current, unless I'm missing what that's the power of that, it can resolve the plummeting feeling. But we're going to have to yeah. somehow bring that plummeting feeling, put some specifics around it. And I have in mind but you change this if it doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. You telling your father in your imagination, hey, I've got this plummeting feeling. Can you help me out? And see what happens. Does that work? Okay. Happy to give it a go. Well, go away. Or give it a go, I mean. <laughs> Okay. What happened? My father was in tears. In tears? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. And he he said that this plummeting sensation that I was feeling that I'd absorbed into myself was part of him was part of his um, he called it a projection 
he said that I, and and I was holding that part of him that he projected inside of myself. But he never meant for me to do that. He never intended that to happen. He couldn't deal with the situation as he as he saw it. And he had no idea that this was even happening. Or the effect it was having on me. And what is your response to all of this? Well, he went on to say to give it to the Divine Mother because she is the true power. And Divine Mother and Unseen Therapist would be? The same thing, yes. Same thing. Go Uh, ahead. And and so to answer your point, uh, it's something I'm still holding on to because it's, it's still present because I've still got hold of it. I haven't released it all right all right well let's uh let's shift let's talk more about the plummeting feeling that you have not released and still in the golden current i i am picturing by the way this golden current as a vertical kind of a current um that's okay that's correct yeah sort of like a a shower of love coming from above kind of thing. Uh, yeah. I, I have a general idea. Ar- that's right. It's flowing around me and, and I'm okay. still within it. Yes. All right. And I have the idea that this plummeting feeling is something like ballast, like a ballast in a hot air balloon that holds the hair yeah. hot air balloon from floating up. Yeah. Into freedom I into the saw sky. It. I actually saw it as... Uh, falling down a mine shaft into blackness. Oh, okay. Well, we can use that metaphor. Okay. So there we are with the sitting at the bottom of the golden current and somehow or other the uh, floor disappears and you leave the golden current temporarily at least, into this, you call it a mine shaft or well? Yeah. Okay. And there's a darkness, a blackness, and so on. So there you are, and you look up, and you look up, and there's the Divine Mother, the Golden Current, above you. And I hear her saying, I'm going to send down. I mean, you got some ballast around you down there. Okay. You've got some weight. Mm -hmm. You've got Mm -hmm. some stuff that you bought into and it's sinking you down there below where you really need to be. And so I'm going to send some helpers on down. Okay. Can can I stop for a second? Because something's just come up. Yeah. Which is uh, that. This, this, this came up as you were saying that, which is from me to my father, I only wanted your happiness. I wanted you to be happy. That's you to your father. Yeah. Okay. And it's as if I chose then to carry some of his sadness so he was free of it. Oh, so if you take on his ballast, he's free of it, and, and, but you still got it. Yeah. Okay. So that's a nice thing. We're going to free your father. Yeah. Okay. But you're paying a price. Yes. All right. All right. So we're going to let, we're going to let divine mother send, let's call them little angels. Will that work down the, yes. Yes. Down down into the hole. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I can hear the little angels. Say, well, okay, this is wonderful that you have the loving thought to free your father. And he is free from this ballast that you now have. We don't see why you want to keep it. I mean, he's already free of it. 
Mm -hmm. If you let go of it, is he going to get it back? That's the question. <laughs> no. Huh? Oh. No, he won't. So you, if you did let go of it, you would just simply have let go of it, and it, it wouldn't affect your father at all. That's right. Would it, would it affect anybody if you let go of it? No. Would it affect people positively because you radiate differently? Yes. Is that a yes, sort of, or <laughs> yes, amen? No, it is a, no, yes, amen, but it's, it's almost like a temple or a shrine. It's like a mausoleum or something, this ballast. I don't see the connection. I mean, is that, is that holding it in place? Yes, holding it in place, yeah. Oh, That's because it's, I mean. it's, there's a sort of, sort of a reverence around it. Yes, a sacredness almost to it. Oh, like, like, good for you, Roop. Look at the great thing you did. Now hold on to it. You can be good forever because you did this nice thing. Is that, do I have it? Did I paraphrase it right? Something like that. Not quite like that. Well, it's, you, you say it your you, way. Okay, it's more like you took it on. It's, it's, it's almost like you took on this karma yourself. You took it away, a piece of it to try and help, uh, except you didn't know what you were doing and you were allowed to release it, but you still got it uh, until you're told you can release it. Oh, okay. Well, now the angel says, <laughs> <laughs> give me one good reason why you should keep it. I don't have one. Well, try, uh, do something. Do it right. <laughs> Do it right. Do it right. Is it? Uh, can I really let go now? Is it? Is it time? How do I know? Well, how would you know? Says the angel. Well, the thought that comes is surely I'd feel something in, internally that would indicate it. All right. Well, okay, let's, let's try a little metaphor then. So there you are at the bottom of this hole with the angels around you, counseling with you, and you have around you, around your waist, let us say, mm -hmm. ballast, sandbags, right? Yep. The same kind of sandbags that hold down a hot air balloon. All right. And one of them says they have labels on them. What? And, and we want to talk, just pick out one sandbag and tell me what that label says. Sacrifice. Like, like you must sacrifice. Sacrifice is good. Yes. All right. All right. Now, logically, is sacrifice good? Depends what it is. Well, in this case, is it good? Do you need it? No. All right. So you're looking at this sandbag. And we're going to engage the help of the angels. Unseen therapist, divine mother. And so in your imagination, look at that sandbag and look at its weight and let the angels look at it with you and see if in your own mind you can watch that sandbag develop a hole in it so that the sand drains out. And as it does, the label of sacrifice disappears from the sandbag. And you become a little lighter. Take a little time to do that. Go through it a time or two or three. The whole sandbag, the sand leaving, sacrifice label fading. And do it again and again. 
until you've got as far as you think you can go and just let me know whenever whenever you complete that. And by the way, there's no requirement that you succeed here. We just want to know what happens. Mm Okay. What happened? I did it three times. So this sack or Hessian bag, uh, which was full of full of sand, uh, as as I saw a hole in it or punctured a hole into the bag. To my surprise, this gold came out. These nuggets of gold. And there were lots of them. And this awareness was that sacrifice is golden. Okay, these words came to me. And I wondered what that meant. I was surprised at those words. Uh, and I saw the, the word sacrifice fade. So I did it again. this time trying to visualize sand, but again, it was the nuggets of gold. Mm -hmm. So I did it again because I didn't understand. Same thing happened. But this time, there was this awareness uh, of that the gold had to be returned back to the golden current. I wasn't meant to hold on to them. Or what is that? Return to the golden current and, or what? I wasn't meant to hold on to them. Oh, you weren't meant to hold on to it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not a bank. <laughs> okay. In, in that, turn it over to the golden current and let it do what it wants to do with it. You don't need it anymore. I mean, did I, did I paraphrase that right? Yes, but what I should have done was was take whatever I wanted to take and pass it straight into the golden current. And 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 then that way I could have been lighter. Okay. Rather than hold on to it. All right. Okay. Um, look at those sandbags again mm -hmm. and and see if you can find the label for yet another. Yes, I've got one. Oh, what is that? Sorrow. Sorrow. Yeah. Meaning you need to keep on with sorrow? Sorrow is important somehow? Or relieving people of their sorrow. Okay. So you relieve yes. people yes. of sorrow. That's a good thing. But the only way to relieve them of it is for you to take it on. Am I hearing that right? That seems to be the case. Okay. Logically, is that a good solution? It's a terrible solution. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll ask you this other question then. What good does the sorrow, what did, good does it do anybody for you to keep the sorrow you've relieved somebody of? Well, as life has told me, no good whatsoever. Well, let me let me let me let me ask oh, you. This. Not as much as I think it would happen. Say it again. By taking it on myself, I thought, and I was mistaken in this thinking, as life has shown me, that 
if a person is relieved of some of their sorrow, they would be lighter beings. Yeah, but the thing... And, go ahead. But they just tend to repeat the mistakes. They tend to get worse rather than better, is what I've experienced. Okay, now... Yes. So I overstepped a mark. I've overstepped a mark. I've done something I shouldn't have done. You stepped the mark? I didn't hear that wrong. I overstepped a mark. You overstepped the mark. Well, I've yeah. got another question for you. If you have relieved someone of their sorrow by, by taking it on yourself, mm-hmm. wouldn't that person still have sorrow because you took on their sorrow and they're feeling sorrow, sorrow for you? Or they feel guilty now that you have their sorrow? I'm not sure how many people are actually aware of it. Well, they just feel better. Okay. In your perception, they feel better, but you've got to, you've got mm-hmm. to carry this forward. Now, if you were somehow able to disappear the sorrow from yourself, mm-hmm. would that mean the sorrow would come back to the other person or they'd be free too? It'd be free. Then you'd both be free. Mm-hmm. So they were in a sorrow prison and you said, oh, okay, I'll open the door. You walk out and I'll walk in. I mean, that's another metaphor, but does that seem right? I know it sounds bonkers, but that's exactly what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. All right. So they're out and free, but you just decided to go into, into prison instead. It's related to the sacrifice. Yeah, I, I see that. I and see. it's motivated by compassion. It's, it's, yeah, I didn't say well, what I was doing was sensible or right, but it's, if if you're compassionate, happened. if you're compassionate, you're a good person. Yes, I think yeah. It's, uh, what I'm remembering now is that the overwhelming desire—it's this completely forgetting about myself and seeing the sorrow and wanting to do something about it was just, uh, that was an overwhelming and powerful feeling. Well, you said was. um, Is that an important word? In the the memory, in the memory. All right. Say this sentence for me and tell me on a scale of zero to 10, how true does it feel? Okay. 10 is, oh, is that ever true? And zero is uh, nothing. Okay. To be successful in this, I must take on other people's sacrifice and sour sorrow. To be successful in this, I must take on other people's sacrifice and sorrow. Yeah, it's about an eight or nine. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Logically, that's true or not? Logically, it doesn't make sense. Everyone's got to figure it out themselves. Okay. So another way, way of saying that is, is you must, for them to be successful and free, you must let them out of the jail cell and you walk in. Yeah. Okay. Well, the angels have a different thought. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> I'm glad somebody does. <laughs> All right. Angels are saying, well, tell us this, and we'll help you with this, Rup. Why not just disappear the jail cell altogether and both of you be free? Sounds good. Well, all right. So we're going to shift metaphors for the moment. Here's the jail cell. Here's somebody in it, sacrifice, sorrow, whatever Mm -hmm. else you want to put in the sandbags. They are in the jail cell. Now, your way of going about this is the key to open the jail cell so they can walk out is for you to open the jail cell and then close the door, go into it yourself and close the door. 
Mm-hmm. The unseen therapist, divine mother, the angels are saying, well, in your imagination, and we'll help you with this, why don't you just let those people out? And then let's look at the jail cell and disappear it. Have it pixelate, as you might see on a picture of a computer. It pixelate mm-hmm. floats off. Or have it just fade off into a cloud. In fact, I'll give you a, a metaphor comes up. There you are. The other people have now left the jail cell. The door is open. You can go in if you want. But suddenly there comes along a cloud. A beautiful, well, it's not really a cloud. It's a segment, a segment of the golden current. And it shows up, and before your eyes, it surrounds the jail cell. It just surrounds it. Mm -hmm. And in your own imagination, with the help of Divine Mother, angels and so on. Can you imagine, try to imagine the bars, the cell, the room, the lock, the door, all of that dissolving and floating off out of the hole into the golden current and leaving both of you, the other person and yourself, free. Try that a time or two or three or more and tell me what happens. Okay. All right. So what happened? So I did it with a bunch of different people. It's quite a, quite a lovely exercise, really. I opened the door. I let them out. I hugged them. And these, these people have been difficult people in my life. Not, not so easy. And, um, and, and, and I found myself saying to them just two, you know, um, three words, you are free. And, uh, and then watching, and then we both watched uh, uh, the jail cell or the jail house just uh, almost being transported in this column of golden light. And I just repeated it with people and the other person just walked off just free and happy. And I realized and I saw myself as, uh, as looking at myself saying, what about you? And the expression came back, um, I've always been free. Well, one of my questions here is it's, I mean, that sounds very freeing. It sounds successful and all of that. Okay. My question to you, it's a realistic one. It's a realistic one. Mm -hmm. Are those things you would like to hear come out of your mouth or are they reflecting an actual shift? A shift. A shift. Okay. Yeah. 
Because with one of the people, I said to them, you can stay in there if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't actually care okay. whether they came out or not. They had the opportunity. Yeah. And it's that feeling of not caring what the other person wanted to do. And I don't mean that in a, in a bad way. It just it's, it was the, it's their decision. If they want to stay, they can stay. If they want to come out, they come out. I can, I, I can open the door. That is reflective to me of, of someone who is reflecting the truth, that kind of power, like we talked about earlier. But do I have it right? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Say this, say this, I'll give you another sentence to say. And again, say it and give me a zero to 10 and how true it feels. You need the emotional response, not the logical response. Yeah. I am powerless. I am powerless. Feels about a five. About a five. And what mm. makes it what makes it a five? What shows up that makes it that's five-ish? Part of me is not believing it. And that's a different point in my body. It's not uh -huh. it's not it's not a head level. All right. It's it's around it's around my body somewhere. Okay. All right. I think, Roop. Um that we've gone about as far as we're going to be able to go today. Remember, what we're doing here is a good start. Now, mm -hmm. open your eyes, if you will. That's fine. Okay. Um, what I'm going to suggest you do is to run this. I mean, I'm going to send you this recording. And while it's fairly lengthy, but you, know, you can go over the recording, particularly focusing on this experience the golden current unseen therapist session that we just did mm -hmm. um, because it was designed in a way that each time you do it, more things are going to come up, et cetera. And, and you can start plugging stuff in and stuff like that. Um, and my guess is, my guess is it will, it will open the doors more and more. You've got a rather stubborn, you've been conditioned to big time. Okay. I mean, really big time. All right. So it's going to take more than one good start session, but the purpose was to open this door for you and get a good start. Do you think we left anything undone for this point at this point? No, I know I've got homework to do. I know I've got to revisit that cell with more people. There's a, there's, a, there's a small queue forming. I, could, I can see that inside my there's, there's a small what forming? Queue of people forming. Oh, queue. So I, need to, uh, I need to apply it. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And that's homework. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm well aware of that. Yeah. All right. But I would keep ask, asking yourself this sentence. I am powerless. I am powerless. I am powerless. And... Keep asking yourself as you go through. I mean, you even stop and open your eyes. And say, I am powerless. What's the number? What's the number? Okay, because that's to me that's the central measure, if you will, of of the progress in this process. Okay. Okay. All right. Anything else you want to go over? No, that's uh, all right. It's been terrific. Thank you.